everyone so for this video i am going to be teaching you how i make my own basic otis foundation block so shout out to <laughs> i wrote your name on my palm so that i don't forget shout out to jen 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 de sorry if i don't pronounce that right but shout out to her for requesting this video three months ago <laughs> <laughs> I know it's been a long time so once you get the basics down in pattern drafting the bodice you can easily alter it so that you can have any shape that you want let's say you want a sweetheart neckline you can easily uh, draw that and just cut out the top bit of the pattern as long as the most important thing is the pattern fits you perfectly or whoever you're making the dress for so I got my knowledge in pattern drafting on from the book that I downloaded online for free. And the book is called Pattern Drafting for Dress Making by Pamela Stringer. So I downloaded it online for free and I printed it out myself and I put it in this uh, book binder. So this is what it looks like. So I just painted this myself so this book helped me a lot everything that I know about pattern drafting I got from this book it shows you how you can pattern draft the foundation blocks of the bodice of the skirts of lapels of sleeves of everything basically and it's patterns for men women and children so everything that I'm going to be teaching in this video about the basic foundation block of the bodice is going to be off of this book so i'm going to link it down on the description below if you are interested in downloading it and maybe printing out your own copy like i did just so that whenever i need i, I want to have my own notes i can write beside the page so yeah basically i'm just going to go over what the book says about making your own bodice basic foundation block instead of calling it basic pattern i'll call it skirt foundation block so i just want to explain that so that we're on the same page on the terms of pattern making okay now let's get into the measurements that you will need to make your own bodice foundation block so for the sake of this video i am going to be using my client's measurement so that you can follow along and you can just uh, substitute her measurements to your own measurements if you really want to follow along the video you should use centimeters so that we're on the same page you're going to need a tape measure the picture on the side is actually a part of the book and i use it as a guide for when i measure i highlighted the measurements that we are going to take to make the bodice pattern First is the bust, which is around the figure and over the fullest part, which is our apex or our nipples. Then our waist. The next one is front chest, which is across from armhole to armhole. And the book says it is approximately 7 centimeters below the base of the throat. And then back width across the shoulder blades from armhole to armhole. Usually the back width measurement is greater than the front chest. Next is neck to waist at the back, which is length from the bone at the top of the spine to the waist. And then similarly to the front, neck to waist. And it is the length from the shoulder at the base of the neck over the bust to the waist. So typically neck to waist front is longer than neck to waist back. Next is the shoulder line which is the length from base of neck to top of armhole position. Distance between your apex or bust points. Next is shoulder to bust point which is length from the shoulder at the base of the neck to the bust point or to your apex. So just to make it easier, I am going to be referring to the measurements by the number at their left. So bust is measurement number one, waist is measurement number two, back with this measurement number seven, and so on and so forth. So you're going to need paper, curved ruler, a straight ruler, 
a pen, an eraser, and scissors. So here's a little sneak peek of what I'm going to be making. Comment down below what do you think it is. First thing to do is to lay your paper flat. If you're wondering what those brown lines are on my paper, that's actually tape because I have only joined small pieces of paper to make a big pattern paper. So as you can see here on the left and I wrote center back and at the right end I wrote center front. Step one is to create two rectangular blocks, one for the back and one for the front. So for the back, the width is one fourth of your measurement number one, which is the bust. And the length is measurement number 11, which is neck to waist back. So bring out your calculators, either a real calculator like my one or your phone because you're going to need it. So for the front, the width is one fourth of measurement number one plus three centimeters this is so that there is tolerance or enough adjustment over the diaphragm when you breathe or when you eat and for the length you're going to use measurement number 10 which is neck to waist front make sure that the top of the back and front foundation block are aligned so here i'm just putting tape so that my pattern paper stays in place. Step two is to draw the horizontal guidelines. First one is the shoulder guideline which is the same measurement for the back and front blocks and it is taken from the guide chart which is provided in the book. So here I'm just using a marker so that it is more visible to the camera. Next horizontal line is the bust guideline which is again can be taken from the guide chart and is the same for the back and front blocks. So here I'm just writing what the lines are for. So get the difference between the length of the front block and the back block and that will be the width of your dart. In my case, it is 4 centimeters. Next step is to draw the vertical guidelines. The first one is the neck guideline which can be taken from the guide chart. It is the same for both the front and the back. Next is the armhole guideline. For the back block, you will need half of the measurement of number 7. And you're going to rule that in from the center back. And for the front, it's going to be one half of measurement number 8 from the center front. Draw a 1.5 cm point below the top of the block at the center back. And then join that point with a curved line to the neck guideline. Do the same thing for the front block. However, you'll put the 1.5 cm point below the shoulder guide. Then rule a 1.5 cm line above the shoulder guide. Then use measurement number 9 to know how long the line will be, making sure that it touches the 1.5 cm guideline we just drew. For the back block, draw a 1.5 cm diagonal line and 2.5 cm for the front block. This will determine the curve of the armhole later on. Here I am determining a rough estimate of where the middle of the armhole guideline is. So you can use a curved ruler or just draw by hand but make sure that it will go through the points of where the center of the armhole guide is, the diagonal line we drew, and the end of the bust guide. Clean it up if you have to and then do the same thing for the back block. Step number 5 is shaping the side seams. Which is for a bodice block, it is just a waist guide. And then get some of both block widths. Which is in my case is 51. And then get half of the waist, which for me is 40 centimeters. And then you subtract the numbers and I got 11 centimeters. And then you divide the answer by 2 and I got 5.5 centimeters. And I'm going to take that much from the inside. Next step is adding the dart. So you're going to want to locate where the apex is. And that's when you're going to need the measurements number 
13 and 14. But you're only going to use half of measurement number 14. So the most common dart is underarm dart. So make a point 9 centimeters down the side seams and connect the apex to that point. As we've calculated earlier, I got 4 centimeters as my dart width and I just part that equally and then make a 1.5 centimeter point away from the apex. That will be the point of the dart. So if you want, you can leave it as it is and just add the seam allowances but i like to take it further and make a dart on the waist so i actually don't have a footage of that part but i'm just gonna show you here on this paper so first with measurement number 13 you're gonna continue that line up until it hits the waist guide so just draw a straight line and then similarly, you're going to draw a point 1.5 centimeters below the apex. So that 1.5 centimeters allowance will make the bus smoother rather than pointy. Usually, the dart will be 2.5 centimeters wide. So just rule that equally on both sides. And because you remove 2.5 centimeters from the waist, you're going to have to replace that on the outside. So you're going to add 2.5 centimeters on the outside. And you're going to rule a line from the point here to that point you just made. And you're just going to elongate the darts on the underarm. So you're going to want to fold the darts like so, making sure that the dart is underneath. And then connect the lines and then cut and when you unfold the dart it's going to look like this that is how you have an even side seam do the same thing for the waist dart and then add the seam allowances so this is what it looks like when it's finished once you have the basic down you can add or remove from the pattern or from the foundation block as you can see here i added a zipper seam allowance for the back bodice block so I actually used this pattern to make this top. As you can see, there are two darts, the waist dart and the underarm dart. By the way, I just really want to say thank you for 100 subscribers. I've been out of YouTube. I, I haven't been active in YouTube because I have so many projects that I had to do. And editing really takes time. And I've been away for like one to two months and when i got back and checked on my youtube channel i already had a hundred subscribers so thank you so much for subscribing to my channel and if you're watching this and if you're not subscribed yet please do so and if you feel like my videos help you in your sewing journey please like subscribe comment help my little youtube channel grow <laughs> Thank you.